Greetings, everyone, and happy Sunday to you. Pete Pardo here from Sea of Tranquility. Welcome to another edition of Ranking the Albums in the co-captain's chair. Once again, here is Mr. Rich Gattino. So, Greetings. How are you doing? Doing good. How about yourself? Doing all right. It's Sunday. Yeah. It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood, right? Uh, unfortunately, we're back to work tomorrow. But uh, hey, you know, we got the full day ahead of us. Rich and I like yeah. to do these bright and early on Sunday mornings so we can uh, have some fun, get into some yeah. music and then enjoy the rest of the day. So uh, so we got a cool one yeah. here for you today. So here's another one of those uh, 80s, early 90s bands that was pretty popular, actually, but um, didn't really have a long career with lots of albums. So we're talking about White Lion, uh, a band that you know, did pretty well for themselves, I think, for a couple of years. But uh, unfortunately, yeah. one of the main guys in the band kind of got tired of the music business and, and decided to call it quits. And that really, in a, in a way, signaled kind of the end of this band for the most part, although they resurfaced yeah. later on. So, and that, you know, we're talking about Vito Brada, their right. guitar hero. And, you know, one of, I, I always thought, one of the best guitar players from that era. And yeah. amazingly enough, just like, just disappeared off the face of the earth yeah i know i think he from what i've heard and read and in interviews and things he's just been a family guy since then ever since the whole end of the era of those 80s bands in the early 90s and yeah. going forward and then he just never got back into the business and there's nothing wrong with that i mean they probably you know he probably made a bit of money i mean it's not like i yeah. wouldn't say white lion were like the you know one of the biggest bands of the era but you know pride sold like two million copies and they yeah. were out on tour all the time. So I'm sure they made a little bit of change. And yeah, maybe he, yeah. maybe he's the smartest guy from that era, right? He realized that, you know what, <laughs> we did what we did and yeah. then everything died. And I, I got a family, I got a, all this other stuff going on and I, he got out of Dodge and he's probably a very happy guy, but it's just weird how you haven't heard anything from him in. Right. Years, it's, you know? it's Mike, it's Mike Trump doing a lot of solo stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, Trump never slowed down at all. Yeah. Just Unfortunately, of... it's just not like white at all, like white line. It's more like you know country rock and stuff like that, just regular rock. Yeah, yeah. But the guy's not got like, a great, uh, voice. great voice. Yeah, he does. Very unique. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, when you got James Lomenzo who played bass in the band, mm -hmm. he went on to play with Megadeth and do all sorts of other things. So you know, pretty notable right. band here. Um, who yeah. I think uh, were able to combine like kind of like catchy pop hooks, but yet all the like acrobatic virtuoso guitar stuff that was so heavy metal ripping. So, yeah, I mean, that's that's what was so big at the time. So I think they kind of yeah. had a little bit of both. And while they, I think, are labeled as one of those glam bands, all right, or, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, you can see why, but I think they brought a lot more to the table. Yeah, yeah. And you know what they, who they uh, were similar to, I thought, was TNT. Because you had those really heavy riffs from Vito, and then you had this really high, you know, high end voice that was very melodic, like Tony Harnell from TNT. Yeah, yeah. that's those, a really good. You know, you know, I never riffs. thought of that. That's a really good comparison. I never thought about. But those it. riffs, like that Tony Latrico, I think his last name is, right? Oh, Ronnie Ronnie Latico, yeah. Yeah, like some of those riffs, man, were so heavy, but his voice was so melodic, and the hooks were so big. That's what White Lion always reminded me of. Yeah, very, very similar, both bands. They, they, yeah, it's it's like you had the guitar virtuoso and then you had all the, the pop hooks and the songs yeah. were a mix of heavy and light. You know, they could do the ballads, they yep. could do the accessible stuff, the really heavy stuff. Um, yeah, yeah that's, that's a really good comparison. And, you know, from two different countries, basically. So uh, so we got right. we only have five albums here to talk about. Um, yep. And there's a big gap in time from the, the last one that they released in the 90s and the more recent one. We haven't seen anything from right. White Line in quite a while, uh, but we'll kind of touch right. on that. So I'll have Rich kick us off with his number five. So that number five one is the one you're talking about. That is Return of the Pride from 2008, which was Mike Tramp by himself with a bunch of other guys and Vito wasn't in the band. Um, I don't have the cover here to show you because I don't own it because I just don't like it that much. <laughs> <laughs> It is what it is, right? Yeah, yeah. But like the opening track, um, San Sandre de Cristo, I think it is maybe. Like I thought the riffing was reminiscent of uh, what Vito would play. Um, song Dream, uh, Live Your Life. Sounds like an old white. I um, mean, you know, um, yeah, sounds like post White Line. Uh, his post White Line band, Freak of Nature. Do you remember that band? Yeah, I do. Yeah, that remind me of. <clears throat> um, but I thought like the the guitar sound on Battle at Little Bighorn 
it's like a bad sound. I didn't really like the sound of it. And the whole album has that kind of issue with the production. Not the best production. I don't like the guitar sound throughout it. I mean, obviously it's not Vito. It's not supposed to sound like Vito, but it just right. is not executed well, I thought. Um, Never Let You Go is a good ballad though. And uh, Gonna Do It My Way has that old white lion spirit. So it has its couple moments here and there, but overall, you know, it's basically like a Mike Tramp solo album. Yeah, I mean, uh, and I'm in agreement with you. My number five is also Return of the Pride. I think, uh, you know, Mike's solo career, you know, was pretty well respected, has been well respected, but I think that, he, you know, not doing the big business that I'm sure he wanted to do. And, right. uh, you know, it's wouldn't surprise me if, you know, he had a conversation with the guys at the label at Frontiers. I'm pretty sure this was on Frontiers Records and said, yeah, you know, well, hey, what, yeah. why don't we try and resurrect, you know, White Line? Because obviously there's the name there, right? Yeah. And, but when you listen to this album, it just, it sounds like a Mike Tramp solo band, solo album. It's actually not bad. I think you it's know not. he sounds fantastic on it as always. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't feel like a White Lion album to me. You know, you got right. the White Lion logo on there, and you know the cover. Yeah. It looks like a White Lion album, but when you peel back everything, it's really yeah. not. But like you said, there are some pretty good songs on there. I think uh, Sun Ray Cristo is quite good. Yeah, that's the opener. And I think this album as a whole is a little darker than what you would expect yeah. from White Lion. Um, it is. You mentioned Dream, nice hook on that one, right? It's kind yep. of heavy. Um, yep. What else we got here? Set Me Free, uh, Battle that Little nice. Horn, kind of anthemic, yeah. but you're right, it does not sound like white, a White Lion song. Yeah. Um, gonna Do It My Way, probably the catchiest song on the album. I think that's pretty Yes, that's what I thought. Yep. And I, I do want to mention, you know, Jamie Law, who's the guitar player on the album. I've never heard of him before mm -hmm. this, so I don't really know what he's done. I think he's a really good player. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem is, you know, you associate White Lion with a specific guitar sound, and right. Vito Brada is a very significant player. And I think that, uh, you know, Jamie's playing is fine on this album, but he, he's not going to convince anybody that this is a, you know, White Lion album. That's the problem. Right. So I think for me, um, it's a solid record. I just don't think it succeeds as a White Lion album. I think if you kind of right. take that, you take the white lion name off of it it's pretty good i think yeah you know, yeah he could have put it on there he could have put it out under maybe freak of nature and it would have worked better and, then it's, and it's perfectly fine right yeah 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 but, but it's got, you know, this one, the songs on it i i you know i don't want to yeah. make it sound like i don't like the album because i think it's actually pretty decent uh mm -hmm. i just don't think it's a white lion record and calling it Return of the Pride is pretty disrespectful, I think. Well, yeah, because a lot of people are like, oh, this is like, you know, a sequel to that album and a kind of return yeah, to it's the not. Line. It doesn't sound anything yeah. like that album, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like uh, it's like replacing, you, you can't replace Eddie Van Halen and Van Halen and go on with Van Halen. Right. You can't do that with White Lion. Two, two, you know, even though Vito Broad is not Eddie Van Halen, similar style though. Yeah. So somebody that's so recognizable, you can't replace that guy with somebody else and call it the same band and everything it just doesn't work yeah and you know there and the, plus the fact that there are no other members from that era right, right? so not, yeah. menzo's not there the drummer's not there it's basically yep. just mike doing what mike has been doing for 25 years and right. we're just going to call a white line again so that yeah. i mean you know you, you bring up the van halen thing so that would be like if david lee roth in five years decides to put back together van halen with yeah. nobody but himself I, it's, yeah. it's, you know that's that's terrible 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 it's crying so uh yeah all right so that's on number five so curious to see what you got at number four okay number four going with the third album big game awful album art by the way <laughs> always hated it when it came out i was like what the hell is this <laughs> It's terrible. Yeah. Right. What kind of I, I, was, I was puzzled by it as well. So, you know. Yeah. What kind of statements that? I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah, this one, the third one, enjoyable, got enjoyable songs, but it's very light. It's very, it's a very light following uh, Pride. Um, let's see. Going home. I mean, uh, yeah, going home tonight, the opener, uh, Broken Home, Baby Be Mine, Don't Say It's Over. It's all pretty light songs they're enjoyable it's just too light after pride 
Pride was a nice mix of Fight Survive and what they did on Pride. So I don't know what happened with this album, why it became so light, but um, and it even has some more Eddie Van Halen influenced guitars, like on what are those songs? Um, Let's Get Crazy and Dirty Woman. Very those are probably the best songs on the album, right? They're, they're good. I don't know. They're actually not my favorites. Oh, really? I see. I, I dig yeah. those songs. I really like my favorites. If my mind is evil, that's, that's heavy. That's great. Yeah, that's a good that's one. the heaviest song on the album. That riff is just killer. Yep. Um, what else? Uh, Cry for Freedom, the ballad, but it has that random heavy riff going through it in the middle, which comes out of nowhere. Yeah, that's a little odd, right? <laughs> um, so. Yeah, and then uh, what else? Oh, Radar of Love. Oh my God, the best, one of the best, if not the best cover song ever done. It's quite good. Love, yeah. it. Love yeah. it. I mean, it just, it's smoking. It's heavy. The riff is heavy. The whole rhythm section is tight. I think it's much better than the original. Go ahead, fight me. <laughs> <laughs> well, I won't go that far, but I will say it's it's a great. Everybody song. else, it everybody really else, will take this out. We'll take this outside on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> and and little and little fighter is cool too. I really like little fighter. It's a great Fighter's melodic great. pop song. Yeah, it's great. I love uh, Vito solo in it. But yeah, man, Radar right Love just finishes it for me. That's killer. Well, you know, it's interesting, and it's my number four as well. Big game. Um, I think, you know, the first single they released off the album was Little Fighter. And I think they had anticipated that was going to be like the second coming of Wait. And it didn't really happen, right? I'm, a really good song, though. I think Little Fighter is great. It is. And yeah. it's almost like then they were, you know, they were banking on that to be the big hit to drive this album. And it didn't really happen. So then like, you know what, well, let's release Radar Love as a single. And they released the video on MTV expecting right. that. And you know what? It's really hard to push an album based on a cover song as a single. It doesn't always work. Uh, but always, I agree with you. It's a great cover. It really I is. I think most of the time, though, it has worked, though. Look at Choir Riot. They did it twice. Look at Anthrax. They did it twice. And it yeah, really I guess. So, I guess. Well, yeah, although we, the quiet riot, to Quiet Riot's um, in, in that instance, though, that yeah. song, nobody in this country knew. Overseas. Nobody knew. Yeah. See here, yeah. but, you know, Radar Love is a pretty popular song here. It is. It is. But I think the band themselves would probably admit that that's a smoking version. And it, oh, it is. It it's, is. It's so hard rock and it's great. Yeah, it is really good. It great with the, with the, on it is terrific, I think. Yeah, yeah. The girl dancing in the bar, she's hot. You know, him with the with the uh, the beer bottle doing a slide on the guitar. Everything about it just rules. Yeah, it, it's pretty cool. But uh, but overall, I think this is a pretty solid album. Uh, I will agree with you. I think it's um, it's like they were trying to go for more textures and variety on the album, and I think it's got yeah. it's got a few too many ballads. First of all, yeah, it's like. I think the stuff that rocks on it though rocks pretty hard. Like I think Dirty, I like Dirty Woman a lot. I think it's kind of funky. Dirty Woman to me almost sounds like Extreme before we really knew who the hell Extreme was. It's got that kind of like yeah, yeah. funk metal feel to it. Um, yeah. What else? Uh, Broken Home for me is kind of like when the children cry part two. It, it's yeah. it's cool. It sounds way we too. Have, we have that, and then you have Baby Be Mine right after it. Yeah. It kind and of kills album, it, right? yeah. Yeah, and then the album opens with "Going Home Tonight," which is kind of light too. So yeah, it is very light. Side one is just very light to begin with. Yeah, side two is where it, it really, you know, living on the edge rocks. Let's get. I yeah. I like let's get crazy a lot. I love the VH style guitar work on that. It's, there, it sounds yeah. like a long lost Van Halen song. Um, uh -huh. and Vito's just going nuts on that. Uh, don't say it's over. It's got a lot of hooks. I like that. Uh, yeah, and that could have been a good. My single. mind is evil. That, my mind is evil is yeah. great. Don't say it's over. Could have been a good single, I think too. I think so too. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know if they ever released that as a single or not. But um, but overall, I think it's a, it's a good album. It's just um, it's kind of a step back after the, those first two albums. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I have a feeling that our list is going to be identical today. I'm already I'm already <laughs> seeing that, and that's okay. That doesn't happen often, but uh, yeah, okay. It's it's. So yeah. is that your three main attraction? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is a, also a great album. I love this album. Yeah, this is front to back a very cohesive white line album. Yeah, there's no filler on it. It shows all sides to them. It starts off rocking with lights and thunder. Um, it's a great song. That's arguably one of their best so, songs. So good. I like the re-recording of Broken Heart. It's yeah. nice and smooth and polished. Really catchy. Um, Leave Me Alone gets a little bit kind of funky. 
which he does veto from time to time. Yep, yep. Um, Love Don't Come Easy was, you know, it was a nice single, but it was the first single. Yeah. And it was too too light and too AOR, I thought. Yeah. They should start off with Lights and Thunder. That would have been a good kickoff. But they did. They went with that more AOR rock single. Um, what else? You're All I Need is Cool. Good ballad. Out with the Boys. Got a nice attitude to it. Yep. Uh, Blue Monday is really interesting. That's got a very, like, Stevie Ray Vaughan feel. Yep, yep. That's Vito really, you know, stretching out. And uh, what else? War Song is cool. That's nice and heavy as well. And uh, Farewell to You, dance off with that ballad. Yep. Farewell to You, I don't know, very uh, prophetic, right? That's yeah. It's our last album, too. <clears throat> yeah, exactly, right? And you're, you're not talking about a lot of years here, right? So about six yeah. years, and then poof. Right. But yeah. I, I agree with you. I think this is a very strong album. And yeah. uh, I like Richie Zito's production on it. I think it sounds like big and ballsy as compared to a big game which i think is like i said like it's yeah. really textured sounding and like it lacks that kind of punch that uh, it's very uh it's very thin compared to this yeah, yeah. and but this is 91 traction. that this came out this came out in 91 yeah yeah and i think you know it's funny because you look at uh, the sales of of these albums and yeah. you know pride and big game sold a lot of records uh yeah. main attraction not as much because it's 91 and already that era is kind of being phased out by grunge and alternative, right? Yeah, so it's a shame. Yeah. Cause I think if main attraction comes out a year or two prior, it does a huge. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I agree with everything you said, all the songs. I mean, uh, lights and thunder is like I said, one of my favorite white lion songs. It's should have been, should have been a legal single. Yeah. It's so good. I, you know, maybe one or two, too many ballads on this album, but I think everything, at, the ballads are good and all the other songs are really, really strong. Um, yeah. You know, she's got everything. Another really great song. Um, yes. And, yep. It's I, heavy too. Another heavy riff. Yeah. Big time, big time. And uh, I think, I don't, you know, it's kind of hard to say, but I think Mike Tramp's vocals sound the most confident he sounded on any of these early albums on this particular one here it's like he really came yeah. into his own here in a big way mm -hmm. and unfortunately it was to be kind of the end of you know the end of it for them for a while yeah, yeah. Um, and if you listen to from fight to survive up to this album he starts off really high and then he starts bringing it down a little bit with each album yeah he does which is probably more like what his comfort zone is right right yeah yeah all right, so so now it'll be interesting to see how we've ranked the first two because so far we've been right in line on everything, um, and I this think that you can make a case for either one of those first two albums, right? I know, I know, it was tough, and I switched it within the past twenty minutes before. I almost, I, I, I almost did as well, but I I kept it to my initial gut instinct, and yeah. sometimes that's usually the way I tend to go. But all right, so my two, I went with Fight to Survive. Okay, so we and did was, we did different, and it was and it was one. And it was one, but I think uh, this is missing what the Pride has, which is a little more of the, the uh, radio friendly singles on. But this is a great, if you want to call it glam metal, this is glam metal. This is a great album. It's that guitar tone on this album is so heavy. Mm -hmm. It's so old T. It's so like old TNT. You know where you have that strong heavy guitar sound, but you have the high melodic vocals over it with yep. big hooks that's what this album is and this one i got a really cool this is the grand slam version of this album so this one is the one that doesn't have james and greg on it they're credited to it and they're in the photo yep. on the back of it they're on the photo but they didn't play on the album yeah, that, that's the same. Uh, and, you know, Rich and I were talking before we went on the air and uh, I also had that LP version back in the day. And I, I actually saw them on tour opening for Crocus before that album was ever released in this country. And people had no yeah. clue who they were and they were amazing. <laughs> I wish I saw them back then. I didn't. But this had a couple of uh, uh, release issues. Like it came out, I think, in Japan first overseas. Yep. yep. And it came out over here. Like the date on this is... Um, Germany in 1984. Yeah. And then it came out here in 85. Yep. Um, Crazy, this right? is this is great. It's definitely it's like the first two Europe albums. Heavy riffs with the melodic voice. Yep. Like the first great great white album, the self-titled great white album. That's got the same case. Heavy guitar riffs, metal riffs with 
melodic vocals. Yeah. Um, but this is great. Uh, the original version of Broken Hearts on this, uh, Fight to Survive, the title track is so heavy, so great. Um, where do we run in the city? And the city's really cool. I listened to it again. And it's got that change in the second half of the song where it really kicks in and it gets heavier. Yep. That is really cool when I revisited that. All the Fallen Men is one of my probably top five favorite songs from them. So great, so heavy. Um, All Burn in Hell, a little slow, a little more Sabbathy. Kid of a Thousand Faces is, is catchy, you know. Um, and then it ends off with that ballad, The Road to Valhalla. Which is great. That piano ballad. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, but this is it's interesting. This album is almost kind of it's like half early glam metal meets a little bit of maybe power metal. Yeah, it's, it's like definitely different, right? I think the only thing that this album is really missing, I mean, Broken Heart obviously is very anthemic, but this album yeah. is missing like that kind of real catchy sheen that the next yeah. album has. And right, but right. it's not a bad thing, right? Because it's like the song no, kick ass big time. Yeah, you know, yeah. um. I almost did a switcheroo as well. Uh, yeah. I was really kind of pained about where to rank these first two because I think, you know, Pride is just such a like memorable album that, you know, if you were yeah. a hard rock or metal fan in that era, you know, you were listening yeah. to this album a lot. And yeah. I think that it's just, uh, it's so accessible. Mm -hmm. I kept it as my number two only because I think there's, I, I love the heaviness and the kind of, uh, we're white line. You don't know who the hell we are, but here we're going to kick your right. ass type of mentality that that first album is. And I, I, yeah. I kind of wanted to keep my loyalty to that. I know in a weird mm -hmm. way, it's kind of sounds bizarre, but so pride is my number two. Uh, I think where pride really succeeds over the first album. I mean, the, the Michael Wagner production is great on pride. Pride yeah. is a great sounding record. Whereas I think the debut, uh, the production's a little on the muddy side, but the guitar tone is great. Right. I think overall it just doesn't sound yeah. as good as pride but you know pride um it's got that bold production you know mm -hmm. start you know it's got hungry right hungry sounds like a hungry what band a killer, killer opening riff uh, it's amazing right uh, it's yeah. got all the hooks and all the killer guitars uh mm -hmm. lonely nights great hook uh yeah. don't give up has got Vito brada all over the place on that mm -hmm. you know sweet little loving is to me um there and I hate to use the term I'm just gonna throw it out there anyway that's there like yeah you know what we can do the hair metal thing too and be uh throw out the hooks that are gonna be all over the radio and all that kind of stuff right, right. Uh, lady of the valley is killer yeah all yeah. right weight is a great hit that's a it is song. That's, and how about that solo? it should have been a hit it should have been a hit and that's why it is yeah it, it's and that solo is just so great it's it's got you know yeah. The hook is just tremendous. Great chorus. Uh, all yeah. you need is rock and roll. Kicks ass. Uh, rocker. Yeah. All join hands is so heavy. That well, opening riff, right? The opening, the opening riff to that song, All Join Hands, right? It's excellent, right? It's excellent. I will say, though, perhaps, and you might find this weird, perhaps my favorite song on the entire album, though, is yeah. Saved for Last. I think When the Children Cry is a gorgeous yeah. song. It it's is. so tender. And that yeah. to me is what a kind of emotional ballad should sound like. Uh, right. The acoustic guitar is brilliant. That solo he plays in it, that Vito plays, it just yep. crying. It's just pure emotion. Yep. It, lovely. And this stuff. was 87, right? Yeah, this came out in 87. Yeah, yeah. And I think When the Children Cry, I mean, so. I know it was a minor hit for them, but I think When the Children Cry is like one of the best songs uh, you know, when you talk about like a ballad from a hard rock band or a metal band, I think yeah. that's one of the best from that era. I love it. And, you know, a this is one of the better sophomore releases out there that did big business. I mean, I think this sold like 2 million copies here and it was like in the yeah. top 20 on Billboard charts, the album for like over a year. So uh, for a reason, right? And it's just, it's yeah. like I said, it could have been my number one. I thought about flip-flopping it like you did. I, I kept it. Yeah my number one and my number one, but um, I think they're both equally um, yeah. tremendous albums. They are, yeah. So yeah, mine's number number one, just because it takes it takes the heavy riffing of the de debut, but it gets more of the polish and the hooks for you know the second album. So they really refined what they were doing in this album. And there's really not a bad song on this. You go from front to back, you know, even I thought that, you know, Fight Survive is the same way, but this really is, 
a nice balance between the two, between the heaviest and the um, the hooks. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you know what's cool about when the children cry? It was different also because the ballads then were power ballads. Right. It was mellow, then it got heavy for the choruses. This one was just all nice and mellow throughout the whole song. Yeah, yeah. Nobody really, I mean, who really did that at that time? Nobody. Uh, nobody, yeah. And not like that anyway. And it, yeah. it's a touching song, right? It's just, right. Um, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, that's my number. That's why it's my number one. It just beats out the debut a little bit for that reason. It's got it's got the, the mix of the heaviness and the melodic sense of the band really perfected on that second album. And Tell Me is my all-time favorite. One of my all-time favorite, probably top three White Lion songs. Yeah, it's a good one, too, yeah. Again, yeah. The, the hook versus Vito. I love his solo in that. It's so smooth and graceful. It's, yeah, he's awesome. Yeah, and he's he's missed. I mean, it's just yeah. It's one of one of uh, you know we talk about like those um, hard rock and metal biggest mysteries and and where have they been and why won't they come back? You know, everybody always mentions like I talk John Sykes all the time. It's like you know, yeah. I think Vito Brada, more importantly, is like the uh -huh. guy who he just he stepped out of the limelight and never came back. You don't even hear anything. Never. There's no yeah. promise of a solo album. There's no oh we're gonna get this right. back together. There's it's been nothing, absolutely yeah. nothing which is pretty strange. Yeah. So, all right. So they, I would, always, they always say uh, never, they always say never say never. So you never know, right? You never know, but it's, I mean, it's been a long, it's been like, it has maybe one more shot. Time. Like, like I'm hoping for a damn Yankees reunion, maybe one more shot, one more chance. <laughs> I'd be into that. Right. Yeah. All right. Fight to survive. My number one. Um, like I said, this is, was a neck and neck thing for me. Uh, I just, yeah. there's, I love the heaviness of the album. I think there's some just songs on this album that I just love. I mean, you know, broken heart, is another one of their best songs, I think. And it's just yeah, so right. damn catchy and heavy. And uh, the title track is just this big guitar juggernaut. Love it. Um, yep. Salvador, who I don't think we brought up yet, is a no, yeah. great showcase for Vito Brava's talents on there. Mm -hmm. um, Kid of a Thousand Faces, catchy. All Burned in Hell is great. All the Fallen Men. Uh, you know, Where Do We Run? Just so many great songs killer guitars, killer vocals, you know, again, production's not quite as um, impressive as what you hear on Pride and the other albums, but I right. think uh, it's just got that raw feel. And I, you know, I, I have fond memories of seeing those guys live before anybody knew who they were before this album was even released here. You know, ironically enough, talking about that sort of topic, uh, just uh, a couple of years later, I mean, literally maybe two years later when they were riding high on the Pride album and headlining, I saw them in a club here locally in Poughkeepsie with Skid Row opening up, who also wow. had not released their album yet. And nobody wow. knew who the hell they were. This was before they yeah. got kind of discovered, you know, Bon Jovi kind of helped them, you know, early on in their career and get the first right, album right. out. So it was just weird how just like a year or two prior, I had seen White Lion before nobody knew who the hell they were. They broke yeah. big and then I saw them headline with this other band who nobody knew who the hell they were, who was soon to break really, really big, even Was, was Sebastian in the band at that point, by then? That? Was Sebastian in the band by, by that point? Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and then they they went over great. I mean, they were, they kicked ass. I think, I think it's the only time yeah. I ever saw um, Skid Row was that. Really? Yeah, I think I, I saw them think probably. What year? What year is that then that you saw so that? That was probably so. Pride came out in '87. It had to have been. My guess is '88. Okay, so I saw Skid Row '88, '89ish. Might have been right around there when they opened up for Bon Jovi at the Giant Stadium when they got their first arena. You know, had um. So this was actor. probably just prior to that. Yeah. Yeah, so and they were great. They were freaking on fire. They were heavy, yeah. and that was when Bon Jovi used to be pretty hard rocking too still yeah well i mean bon jovi was on the top of the world right about right around that time for the most part so what were you saying i said bon jovi was pretty much on top of the world at that point you know late yeah 80s. they were yeah that was their they were huge then and they were great then too they were still great all right so there we have it everybody uh white lion ranking the studio albums so curious to see yeah. how everybody ranks these albums what you think of this band uh i think if you know you're someone who stumbled upon this video and you're like ah white line they were just a hair metal band that's like you know what i think you need to rethink that and listen to some of these albums because i think there's a lot yeah. more there like we said like we said with extreme and a bunch of other bands who we brought up you know yeah, yeah. especially you got to listen to their first couple albums that's where these bands are really metal bands 
you know, even though their singles were more pop, if you want to call it pop metal, that's fine. But if you don't listen to the whole album and the whole rest of their early part of their career, you don't really know. Well, yeah. I mean, that that unfortunately was what happened to a lot of these type of bands here in this country yeah. at the time period, because the labels were right. all about releasing the, the, the squeaky clean, catchy singles to appeal to right. the mainstream. And in many cases... Yeah uh that was not representative of what these bands were all about you know we talked you know this band we talk about extreme mr big uh yeah. europe i mean those singles yeah. those big you know mtv videos and whatever usually was not what right. the band was all about and most which people- is fine i mean it's, which is fine though you get a great song it's a great song it's like twisted sister they were still a heavy metal band even though everybody associates them with we're not going to take it and i want to rock and what else the price and yeah a, a terrible cover of uh oh my god what was that song on come out and play oh it was awful oh uh, what is remember. it i'm sure if you once you mentioned it, about it. i was never much uh, of a twisted sister fan there was a song there was the song be cruel to your school be cruel to your school with alice cooper which was bad and then there was the other single that was just awful too but anyway you, you can't make a case for the band being that band if you're going to just rate them off of singles yeah, that no, was, that's absolutely that's true. true. Yeah. Time. But you know, there's a there's a ton of people out there who are not album people. They just they listen what's on right. the radio, they watch what was on MTV, and that's as right. that's as deep as they go. So their their opinions is based are based on you know one percent of the material right. that these bands have released, and that's it's really not a fair shake, right? Oh, it's totally not. And then if you saw them live too, they were not light live at all. They right. brought it. They they cranked up those guitars. They were heavy live. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. All right, guys. So there you have it. So uh, curious to see the comments below and what you think of this band, White Line, how you rank the catalog. Uh, this is on the web at www.seatranquility.org. We're on Facebook. We're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time. Rich, you want to give a couple links where folks can find you outside of Sea of Tranquility? Sure. Metalsylum.net, Brave Words Magazine, and the Metal Hall of Fame, and Am I Evil graphic novel based on the Diamond Head song. So oh, in that song, the Twisted Sister song, was leader of the pack just came to me. Oh yeah. Yeah. That so was, bad. That so was bad. bad. That was not good. <laughs> so bad. Uh, I, wow. Now I remember that now. Yeah. That was not yeah. good at all. That That's was, not a good move. That was a bad career choice for them. Bad. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I have to kind of take that out of my memory banks now. Cause uh, yeah. Almost as bad as Judas Priest, uh, Johnny Be Good. Yeah. That was not good either. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, there's a good cover like Radar Love, like we talked about, and then there's those. Exactly. And there's plenty of exactly. those. <laughs> exactly. Great comparison. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody, take care. This has been fun. We'll see you later yeah. on. Uh, don't forget, Monday night, we've got uh, the Hudson Valley Squares talking about our top three hard rock and metal vocalists. And uh, Chris nice. Allen and I will be ranking the catalog of Nightwish. That's all coming up tomorrow. Oh, night. cool. Don't miss out on that. We'll be seeing Very Rich cool. you know, again real soon. So for Rich, yes. I am Pete Pardo. Have a good one, everybody. Thanks.